Today's demo will focus on three parts. Part one is a quick review of adding vias and via arrays using a newly redesigned dialog. Part two will show you how to add via fence lines along objects. And finally, part three will demonstrate how to automatically generate via and ground shielding from selected objects. So let's start with part one. To show adding vias and via arrays at their simplest, I've opened a quad flat pack. Here's the Add Via dialog. Notice the ability to add an array included in this newly redesigned dialog. So here you select your via. The start layer and end layer is reported just to give you some visibility. And when you're in a component, you have to select a parent pin so that the via can be assigned a net when it's placed on the board. You also assign a reference. That way the vias are trackable. Here, assign via to pin and via to via clearances. If you don't want to change these values, they're populated from the default net class. And if you want to add an array, select the rows and columns and offsets. The violation processing here, you can add vias regardless of any violations or you can choose all or none. If one of the vias does not pass DRCs, then none of them will be placed. Or you can choose partial, where only the vias that do pass DRCs will be placed. And here, select at location or coordinate entry for your placement. We'll choose at location. And here you see my via array. I'll place it right here. And there you have it. So to wrap up part one, let's quickly look at how to add vias in a board. Go to Route, Via Routing, Add Via, and here you see a very similar dialog to what we just looked at. Notice these net name options here. The via needs to know what net to be assigned when it's placed down. So the floating option is going to assign it just a default NC net, so it will belong to itself or I can choose to specify what net to connect it to. Here I can choose from a list of the known nets or I can click locate. So let's say I want to add some vias here to this fill. Well it detects the TRNST net to assign it to and let's say I want to add an array. I can choose at location or coordinate entry to place them down so I'll choose at location and I place my vias. So now let's take a look at via fencing in Pantheon. Okay, so I've returned to my quad flat pack and we're going to take a look at adding some simple via fence lines. So I go to add init term via fence. Init term is just one of those funny words we use to say basically draw a line. So here I select my option and it's waiting for me to draw my line. And Let's say I just want to draw kind of a messy line but we'll just go with it and here you see the preview. This is the line onto which my vias will be placed. I choose the geometry and again you need to assign a parent pin so it knows how to assign nets to it and here you see reference via in comp 5. It actually remembered that it has four via in comp references from the, our via array. And um, as you can see, the clearances can be manipulated. So let's say um, we want them a little bigger so that our vias don't collide too much. Violation processing, once again, um, same options, ignore, partial, or all or none. I'm going to click partial and I'm going to assume all of them will go down so let's see. Alright, there we go. It's a little bit of a wiggly line just because that's how I drew it but you can see the basic idea. Alright, so returning to the board, let's look at how to add via fencing on the board. I return to the route menu, via routing, add in it term via fence, just like in the component and 
Using this as an example, let's say I want to add some fencing along a fill. Draw my line. And here this dialog's a little different. It's showing me my line, and I need to select a net to assign the BS2. And in this case, we know we want to add it to the TRNST net. And my list over here populates with only the enabled vias for the net class that is assigned to the TRNST net. So I'll select one of those vias. And down here, the clearances have been populated from that net class. I can make the clearances larger, but I cannot make them smaller because making them smaller violates. So let's just pick some larger. And I'll choose partial. Let's see what we can get as results. All right. So along my line, I only got some of the vias and I'm sure that we can see the reason why if we just turn on a few layers here. So what you see is a via fence where all of the vias that could be placed were placed, any of the vias that violated were omitted. Now let's look at automatically generating via and ground shielding from selected objects. For this last segment of the demo, I've selected an RF design that requires a lot of ground shielding. And um, for this first example, let me show the ground shielding of a mounting hole. Go to route via routing, add object via fence. Oh, and I'm, I must have selected more than one part here. There we go. So it has its one object, which is the mounting hole. It's telling me that the mounting hole is attached to D-ground um, and we also want we're going to use D-ground because the area fill around it is also on D-ground. So I select D-ground, I get my via geometries that I can use and I'll select one. Now here you see it's showing me the vias on the interior so I'm going to change that and make that exterior. Clearances can be changed, um, again, to be larger than the default net class, but not smaller, because they violate. And so let's just say we want that 0.01, and here we're going to see the fence-to-fence -fence setting has to be the same. It's got to match via-to-via, -via or it'll violate, so we'll, change, we'll update that. Hit Enter, and my preview updates. Now sometimes there are little skips in what the automatic generator can do. So if you click, you can change the starting point to see if you can sort of um, self-correct it. And sometimes as you can see it can't be resolved so there will be a little hiccup. Um, but you know, much faster than nothing. So let's choose partial violation processing. Hit OK. And there you go. You've got your via ground shielding over here. So to show another example, um, an area fill can have ground shielding on it using the same dialog. Go to route, via routing, add object via fence. We'll select the ground again. Select a via and it populates. Now in this case we want on the interior of the object and uh, we could leave it at two fences, but let's space it out a little bit more. Uh, I guess we could leave the other objects as they are. Hit enter again to update our preview. And partial, hit OK. And here is our result. You can see where vias that violated were dropped out and vias that did not were retained to shield this area fill.